Hello. In the auto transform video, I made a cryptic reference to inductance, and some of you may have wondered what I was on about. Well, if you took a multimeter and measured the resistance of this auto transformer when it is set to zero, you would only get 0.9 ohms. The electricity in this building is about 119.9 volts last time I measured it, which if we take Ohm's law, tells us that when we plug this in, it should draw 133 amps. Since it's plugged into a 15 amp circuit and that circuit breaker hasn't tripped, caught fire, and shot across the room, there's obviously something else going on here. Well, inductance is the tendency of a conductor to oppose a change in the flow of electrical current through it. By winding this wire in a coil around a core, we've increased the inductance to the point where it no longer acts like a dead short. There are tools to measure inductance, but I don't have one. I do, however, have the ability to measure voltage and amperage. And so if I plug in my auto transformer and take those measurements, I get 119.8 volts and 0.12 amps. If I then take my calculator and Ohm's law, it tells me that I am getting 997 ohms of resistance from somewhere. Well, that is the inductance caused by the coiling the wire around the core inside this transformer. Now, this only works with AC because it's the alternating current that the inductor is opposing, the changing current. If you went back in time and found one of the old Edison power grids that still used DC instead of AC and plugged this in, everything would catch fire. So maybe don't do that. Now, Talking about inductance, I was always told as a wee electrician that it was vitally important that you coil your cables properly or inductance would do bad things like cause fires, cause audio interference, make the chicken stop laying. So I decided to do a test. I grabbed a 100 foot long 312 cable from our stock room and I laid it out in various patterns and measured the voltage and amperage on it. Um, using our 500 watt psych light as a load and just check to see if there was a difference between the various methods of coiling it. And the results were uh, inconclusive. So first I ran it in a straight line. I wanted to just run it straight from the outlet to the lamp, but the shop's not long enough. So I ran it there and back, left about two foot of space between each leg of the cable, plugged my lamp in, took my measurements, got 118 volts and 4.2 amps. So then I coiled it into a spiral, like twisting it in one direction as I was coiling it. Like over under, but wrong. The cable did not enjoy this, I assure you. And plugged my lamp in, took my measurements, got 118 volts and 4.2 amps. So then I straightened it out and I coiled it into a figure eight, which I was always told was the perfect way to coil your cable if you were trying to avoid this sort of inductance related nonsense. Plugged my lamp in, took my measurements, got 118 volts and 4.2 amps. So then I coiled it over under style, plugged my lamp in, took my measurements, got 118 volts and 4.2 amps. So then I thought to myself, maybe it's because the hot and the neutral are running right alongside each other in the same jacket, maybe like stuff's canceling out. So I grabbed just separate lengths of wire and ran the hot, or ran the neutral, excuse me, straight from the outlet to the lamp, and then ran the hot through this 60 foot spool of 12 gauge wire. Took my measurements, got 118 volts, drawing 4.2 amps. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, maybe this is all just an urban legend. Maybe the heating problems are if you coil your cables too tightly, the heat can't escape. That's the heat that's generated just by the normal resistance of the cables. Maybe this is only a problem when you're dealing with much higher loads than a single 500 watt cycle. Light. Maybe this is only a problem when you're dealing with four op cables where you've got three separate hots and your neutral all in separate wires. Um, so maybe just coil the cable how the person paying you tells you to coil the cable. Unless they tell you to wind it around your arm, in which case don't. Anyway, that's all for now and thank you for watching. Don't wind it around your arm.